Where is the money going to come from? The city of Toronto is short $57 million in an operating budget for next year, not including $67 million needed for new services that have been promised to residents, things like earlier Sunday service on the TTC and an anti-poverty strategy. Those numbers, though, are dwarfed by the $22 billion in unfunded capital projects in the city's plans. And so, where will the money come from? Brian Kelsey is a public policy consultant and a former budget advisor to the mayor of Winnipeg. Good morning. How would you describe the budget and the hole that the city is facing? Well, the budget is unfinished uh, by Canadian standards normally... uh At this stage of the budget process, uh, the public service would come forward and present city councillors with a completed budget that had uh, no gap. A gap is what uh, city budgeters, you know, it's the colloquial term to describe the difference uh, uh, between what you're you're spending and what you're taking in. And normally it it gets filled with property taxes or other cuts. Uh, That's the uh, $57 million figure you're talking about. Uh, Because I think... Uh, the city hasn't been making uh, financial decisions quickly enough. Uh, you had a situation where you had this large gap that remained in December. I think city manager to his, uh, city manager Peter Wallace, to his credit, has turned this into a virtue by stepping forward and saying to uh, city councillors, look, we're going to take out all the new spending you promised as well. And we're kind of at a choose-your-own-adventure stage where uh, councillors and and the mayor, who have been announcing for for months uh, different strategies on poverty and new services and the TCHC and so on, uh, now have to uh, pony up and actually back those commitments uh, with decisions of their own in terms of adding uh, adding dollars from somewhere rather than relying on the public service to do it for them. I think a lot of Torontonians might be surprised that those things that were suggested, I don't want to say promised, but that they were, um, you know, laid out for Torontonians, things like, you know, improved uh, state of repair at TCHC, uh, earlier Sunday service for the TTC, uh, bus routes, a poverty reduction plan, that there's no money attached to that. That, well, that people kind of floated these ideas out, and, and I think a lot of Torontonians would think that these ideas are happening, and it turns out that there's no way to pay for them just yet. Well, welcome to politics, and and I'm afraid <laughs> I'm afraid that's the case, and I'm afraid you know by by my own personal view, it's it's been um, <clears throat> you know irresponsible and short sighted, and ultimately the politics of what's really happening with this budget is that you've got um, a city that's been. Uh, for stalling long-term decisions. And to me, that's both savings decisions. We've talked about money that could be saved in the police department, substantial dollars, for example. It's also revenue decisions, and there's a mix of both. And council keeps pushing off and pushing off and pushing off the notion of any long-term decisions. What we've had now, what we've got here on the table, is a budget that even puts off the short-term decisions of... uh, you know, how you actually pay for the things that were, were promised yesterday, let alone the literally billions of dollars worth of infrastructure problems that we've got unsolved in the, in the city as well. So um, the problem I've got is uh, there were a number of different uh, decisions made in terms of how this budget was presented. I write about one of them in torontoist.com this morning that essentially make the problem look less bad than it actually is because in in my mind, by my standards, that 57 million number uh, would normally be north of 120 million minimum if it was presented conventionally the way you'd see in a normal uh, budget process. And uh, the, the more we play games with ourselves and say, you know, we can put it off to next year to put it, and put it off to next year, the less time we have to make the right decision. And in budgeting, timing is everything. You need months to line up uh, the ideas, whether it's new savings or new revenue, to actually make the thing balanced. Where's the money going to come from? The mayor says property tax increase will be kept at or below the rate of inflation. He's sticking to that promise. I, I'm not sure I bet cash money on that outcome in this particular case. Um, uh, the the to To get... Uh, a property tax increase at inflation, you'd be looking at 1.3% this fiscal year. That takes that gap down to about $23 million. Uh, but um, again, councillors who want to add any new spending or any new investments to the budget are going to have to increase that number back up again. So, um, you know, I'd be surprised if it's, uh, you know, anything less than two. So where's the money going to come from? Well, the money's going to come from uh, some property tax increases, and you've already seen the the mayor concede in the future, in future budget years, that that's going to have to happen. Uh, I I believe that there's going to have to be some... um, um, you know, <clears throat> some decisions made around innovation, decisions made around things on the policing side to save money as well. I don't think it's going to be, I, I think by the end of the next fiscal year, 
Um, Toronto is going to be back in a position where it's talking about new revenue sources, even for those councillors who don't want to have that conversation, whether it's finding some new way to deliver on a hotel tax or returning to some of the tax measures that were rejected during the Ford era, because they're not making other decisions on how to fill that gap right now. For the average Torontonian who hears a lot of numbers and goes, I don't know. I mean, yeah. why does this matter to them? Well, it, it, it matters uh, both for their pocketbook in terms of, of taxes and user fees and uh, transit fares, but it also matters in terms of of um, the the services that are, are being bought. And to put a slightly different spin on that, um, it's not just about whether or not the city buys new transit lines and repairs its its roads and pipes and bridges. It's also about the speed with which it does it, that uh, if we don't solve some of these problems quickly, the standard Canadian City Hall answer, which Toronto has used already for years and was proposed in some of the discussion uh, yesterday already is to defer is to is to keep it on the books and say yes we're going to get this kick and, the can down the road uh exactly the phrase i used uh, with with your your producer yesterday is that that it it um uh, it's not just uh, you can have billions of dollars worth of new capital spending announced and on the books, but if nobody actually has the cash flow ready to pull the trigger and make that happen, you're going to see the, the, the date for when that construction starts and when that service actually gets delivered continue to move another year and another year and another year deeper into the future. Brian, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. It's Brian Kelsey.